Hi everyone, please support our videos on Patreon. The link's at the end of the video and in the down there part. Thank you, you're lovely. So I need to start this video by clarifying a few things. I'm going to be talking about a few of my stalkers. And when I say that, I need to establish a firm disconnect between stalker and everyone else who has ever had a bad take about me. Between Twitter and Tumblr, there's the occasional weirdo who will have a dumb opinion about me or my work, or a YouTuber who makes one video about me and then fucks off forever. And I'm not going to be discussing them in this video. Nor am I going to be discussing people who have had legitimate reasons to be and remain angry with me in the past. There have been instances in the past where I've been involved in some horrible takes or said something racist without knowing it was, and anyone who is still upset with me over that is completely within their right to be so. I'm not owed forgiveness by anyone, and they probably don't think about me until my name crosses their feet anyway. No, I'm talking about a few very specific people today. With that out of the way, let's go. So for 12 years, I've been subjected to a great deal of stalking. The names have changed over time, but there have always been a few people hounding me quite aggressively and obsessively. Between Templar Gamer and Doritos Pope a decade ago, to the current crop of parasocial losers, stalking has been the background radiation of my life. We're talking about the recent group of them today, who, for the sake of not drawing attention to them, we will call Karen, Carol, Katie, Ellie, Skylar, and Val. I apologize if any of these are your actual names, dear viewer. These six people have either previously or currently been involved in a harassment campaign that is simultaneously abusive, ableist, transphobic, misogynistic, racist, and libelous. In fact, the only thing protecting them from a defamation suit is that you have to do actual damage to someone's life to be sued, and stress is not considered grounds for a lawsuit. The thing is, with every stalker, there is usually an inciting incident, something that tweaked them that made them want to start hounding me aggressively. For Karen, it was the fact that I ended a friendship with her because of her being an aggressive, fair-weather friend, and in retaliation, she has spent eight years accusing me of everything from secretly being another person entirely, faking being trans to get in her pants, despite the fact that our friendship ended shortly after I came out to her, and I had already been in her pants years prior, and inventing quote-unquote embarrassing stories to share with the older stalkers like FNGR and Vita. Carol is actually a right-wing grifter, who has been trying to content farm me to distract from the fact that she defended Vosh's violent and racist harassment of two black women, and took part in the harassment herself, and has gone as far as to pretend to have a medical degree to justify psychoanalyzing me without ever having met me so that she can claim I'm bipolar, have narcissistic personality disorder and borderline personality disorder from a place of presumed authority for money and clout, despite not understanding how any of those conditions actually work. And I am not the only trans person she has tried to content farm. Katie was actually a fan of my work until I said her boyfriend was wrong about the horse show, whereupon she proceeded to deadname and misgender me for years, claiming I didn't deserve to have my womanhood respected and passed around fake stories of me secretly being a pedophile in retaliation for me going after the brony fandom for its tolerance of pedophiles. Ellie, oh fuck, I just realized there's no keeping this one's identity secret. Anyway, Ellie is my abusive ex, who has jumped at the chance for attention and clout to claim I was the abuser in our relationship as retaliation for talking about the way she abused me, taking instances where I expressed frustration or annoyance with her flakiness to claim that I was the real abuser. The technical term for this is reactive abuse, where your abuser provokes a reaction from you to then claim you are the real abuser, kind of like what Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp. Skylar is another former friend who I kicked out of the group for being aggressively combative and starting fights with people, only to then turn around and trauma dump on the rest of us, and it became clear that it was a toxic cycle and needed to stop, and they wouldn't stop on their own. They would later go on to gloat when my last relationship fell apart, pretend to be sympathetic toward me in public while talking aggressive shit about me in private to the point that I don't know for certain, but I have a hunch they were celebrating when news got out that I had been raped in 2018, and also harass LGBTA children on Twitter for clout and validation. And Val was the same as Skylar, but with added biphobia that made me very uncomfortable considering that I'm bi myself, who then turned around and made a gossip blog almost immediately after the friendship ended and went full psycho ex girlfriend even though we'd never dated. And in the cases of other stalkers who weren't prominent enough to mention, the inciting incident is usually the Steven Universe video, the videos talking shit about Catchador and Raylo, the videos talking positively about Family Guy and the Big Bang Theory, or an old shitpost thread where I gave comically bad writing advice like, all sex scenes need a harmonica solo, and if at first you don't succeed, give up and do something else. Or they're still seething about the two Big April Fools videos despite clearly not having watched them. That's actually my favorite. 
like, got him. I know the initial thought is that, Lily, that's a lot of former friends, especially given your fallout with Josh, and five former friends coming out to say that you're a bitch would ordinarily be a damning statement, but it loses its power as a statement when you remember that this is four friends and one ex over eight years, and they always keep the year and the time out of their callout posts. This casually ignores the ten friends I have remaining, some of whom have been around just as long, and two of which are exes I'm on mostly good terms with, and my wife, who I've been with for three years without a single damn problem. And this is always countered by stalkers with insistence that I'm actually a terrible friend, and the rest are going any day now, or accusations that my friend group is actually a cult. Because, naturally, cults are things that happen online, where none of the members are socially isolated from other people, which is the only way cults can actually work, you dumb fuck. They always have an answer for the reality that the majority of my relationships actually go pretty well. And that answer is usually, oh, I bet that's fake. Every one of my friends secretly hates me, my wife is battered and afraid to leave, and everyone who speaks positively about me is my alt account. I must be a superhuman to run 130,000 alt accounts. Fucking get on my level, Flat. Now, here's the thing. I'm not here to address every single claim they have ever made. There are too many, and they often contradict each other. Like, I'm simultaneously an anti-sex puritan, but also an aggressive pervert who definitely has secret accounts on poor sites that they can't actually link to me. I'm simultaneously such a rancid human being that nobody would ever genuinely like me, yet have also managed to snare 11 victims who are convinced otherwise, despite my villainy being so obvious. It's an extension of the I love Kim Possible a lot paradox. KP supposedly abuses her staff and treats them like slave labor to such a cartoonish degree that everyone just knows it, yet she still has a staff and still finds new people working for her despite not paying anyone and therefore having nothing to tether them to a shitty job like Amazon would. The thing is, many of these stalkers always get very angry when I don't take their outlandish accusations seriously. When someone has a freak out over the fact that I ran a writing contest where the goal was to write a gay proposal in a fantasy village, and the prompt itself naturally excluded non-romantic pairings and tried to claim I was aerophobic because of that, you can't really take that seriously. And in fact, most people don't take it seriously. They've been doing this shit for 12 years, it has never made an actual negative impact on my career. Even Josh trying to slander me with a larger platform than me resulted in a 2,000 subscriber loss, which at the time equated to 5% of my total audience. And there has never been a dent like that made since. So it's clear why they want me so badly to take it seriously, because taking their outlandish accusations and addressing them seriously gives them validation they don't otherwise have. I frequently get anons who insist that if I just lied and confessed to everything they accused me of, people would let it go and they would go away. But the thing is, I tried that once. Someone came in with an accusation about some shit from 2013, and I corrected the real story because the accusation only had a tiny shred of truth to it, referring to the Fire Rose ship that plagued the Brony Analysis community for a while, and which I kind of smiled and nodded along to, and on reflection shouldn't have. But then again, I've talked about how harassment was held over my head as an implicit threat in that community, and it's been demonstrated that the analysis community uses harassment to silence people who speak out against them. And let's establish this right away. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have smiled and nodded and went along with the joke. I should have said something and taken the risk of harassment and abuse. It was wrong of me not to say anything, and I am sorry for that. But none of that mattered. I was instead accused of adding years to push it back further, and even addressing it was taken as an admission of guilt, not of the real wrongdoing, but of the fake wrongdoing which was then passed around as further justification for even more harassment, because that was the goal. In the absence of real proof, bully the target into a false confession to then use to condemn them. The police do this with people all the fucking time when they want to prosecute, but don't actually have proof. Give us what we want and we'll leave you alone is a fucking abuser tactic. The problem with taking them at their word when they say that is that they don't want it to end. If they wanted it to end, they would have given up and gotten lives of their own and touched some fucking grass already. It's just that as the years have gone on, even people who don't like me have started to remark on just how obsessive some of these people are. Even as time goes on, it becomes harder and harder to justify it to themselves, so they need some kind of validation to keep it going, and get people on their side again. As the years have gone on, things have gotten more and more desperate. They failed to convince people that I was secretly running a child sex trafficking ring out of my basement years ago, and so now they've devolved into screenshotting every single dumb opinion I've ever had and picking it apart looking for more ways to psychoanalyze me. This is parasocial hatred, where you begin viewing the target under an always negative light, where everything they do must be framed through the most uncharitable lens possible. It's a term known as bitch-eating crackers, where you have such strong negative feelings towards someone that everything they do suddenly irritates and upsets you, even if that thing is just them eating crackers. These people's hatred of me has consumed them completely and utterly, and so no attempt to dissuade them is going to work. They want to stalk me. They want to harass me. They want to find out where I live so they can come to my house to try and intimidate me. They've done this before. This is why all their logic and rationalizations are so shit. 
because they don't need to be good. They're not trying to win an argument. They're trying to keep the argument going, and they need to keep finding new ways to convince themselves that it's worth it to continue this kind of obsessive harassment. One of the people I mentioned above has been at this for eight years. Let's circle to another element of the problem, and for those who need it, content warning, stalking, psychological terrorism, sexual abuse, elder abuse, transphobia, and ableism. You've probably heard of Christine Chandler, also known as Chris Chan by the internet. She's considered to be the single cringiest person on the planet by people who don't know how cringeworthy billionaires can be. Her nickname has been ubiquitous on the internet for 15 years, and almost everyone knows who she is, even if they don't know why they know that. Here's a short biography of Chris Chan. In 2006, she wrote a bad crossover comic featuring a hybrid of Sonic and Pikachu. One company out in Boston that basically cuts it in big blocks. And in 2021, she was arrested for sexually abusing her elderly mother. Oh! Oh! Oh my oh! god! Oh! oh my god! That went south so fast! Ah! Oh! That's pretty intense. I'm sorry about dropping that in your lap, but once you've recovered from falling out of your chair, you might be noticing something. And that is, wait, there's only two things there. And the only actually bad one is from last year. So why have we all known who this person is for over a decade? You see, Chandler was stalked by the internet after bothering 4chan with her webcomic, and this went beyond normal internet stalking. Several entire websites were dedicated to stalking Chandler for years, and hundreds of people have spent so much of their time, energy, and life documenting every single random thing she posted or did between 2006 and 2022. Chandler is what the internet calls a lol cow, someone who can be milked for laughs and content farmed forever. These people are usually neurodivergent in some way, and in recent years, trans people have been the target of stalking, and even people who are neither just for shits and giggles. And it's not like every case is the same. Most people that lol cow forum stalk don't eventually vindicate their stalkers by doing something horrible. Chandler's abuse of her mother was a surprise to everyone, even to the people who had documented documented the fact that years of stalking and abuse had deteriorated Chandler's mental health. Most people targeted by these forums are just random autistic ADHD or trans people, or just YouTubers that you can pretend are cringeworthy if you squint really hard and are also a biased loser. Everyone is milked for content. But there's a limit to how long you can do this and maintain an air of dispassionate amusement. There comes a point where it becomes an obsession and the real undercurrent of people who frequent lolcow forums is that they're losers. They're pathetic, sad, hopeless losers who have such little going on in their lives that they don't just enjoy finding cringe people online to laugh at, they need them. They need to have people they see as beneath them in order to feel better about their own lives, and they will often eat people in their own communities alive the moment one of them starts to break the illusion by being a desperate stalker themselves. You only knew who Chris Chan was before 2021 because of the obsessions of some very sad people. And this goes for the likes of any high-profile victim of cyberstalk, and the vast majority of them don't have actual crimes to use as flimsy justifications. The creator of Beastness, a Super Nintendo emulator, committed suicide after being stalked by lolcow forums for years. Nier didn't do anything other than be a non-binary person existing in someone's vicinity. And for that, they were stalked incessantly and had already terrible harassment made orders of magnitude worse. These are very sad, pathetic creatures, who are so desperate for validation of their own lives, they spend all of this time and energy trying to get people to commit suicide. That is their goal. These are my stalkers. Karen, Carol, Katie, Ellie, Skylar, and Val spend hours of their day keyword searching to pick fights with people and aggressively pick apart everything I do and say. To what goal? What's the point? Friends, fans, and assorted fuck buddies, this is cope. It would be an understatement to say that most of them aren't doing very well. Outside of my ex, who is just in this to be vindictive, most of them don't have very good lives. They are pathetic, sad monuments of failure, and their only recourse is to delve deeper and deeper into a parasocial hatred, to convince themselves that a public figure they are obsessed with is worse than them so they don't have to feel worse about themselves. Except Carol, who is just a fascist grifter who harasses black women for money. I'm gonna keep saying that, because it should be said. And one thing they keep trying to do is insist that actually it is me that is obsessed with them. It is me that is stalking them. Remember what we said about reactive abuse? No you is the only string to their bow. But not to brag, I live a pretty comfortable life. I work four days a week. I have a decent apartment that isn't overpriced. I have a beautiful wife who I adore and who adores me in turn to the point that she cried when I brought her a birthday cake, the big sap. I live in a real country and not whatever America's supposed to be, and my job doesn't ask much of me outside of constantly coming up with new opinions to share and dealing with YouTube's bullshit. And these are people who spend so much of their day desperately trying to convince others and themselves that I'm actually a terrible person who should have her good life taken away from her for... reasons. Am I supposed to believe they're happier than me?
I don't have a thesis statement here, and I don't even know if I'm using that term properly. I just wanted to talk about the stalking and harassment I've endured in a very frank way, in a very honest way, free of the gaslighting and harassment itself, and getting down to the meat of why I'm being harassed. People say I'm a bad YouTuber. There are plenty of bad YouTubers. People say I'm a bad writer. There are plenty of bad writers. People say I'm a bad person, but there are plenty of bad people. For the most part, when you don't like a writer or YouTuber, you just kind of stop consuming their work. That's the healthy thing to do. It's why I never did a second Natalie Wynn video after she had that shit-flinging tantrum. Because I don't want to watch her videos anymore. The woman's a conservative true scum. Why would I bother? But this kind of obsessive stalking never comes from a place of good faith. It's never about anything real I've done. Because at the end of the day, the intersectional socialist Sith Lord OC who lectured Leia about being prejudiced and the science accident encrypted baby who was made in a microwave just isn't worth getting worked up over for a normal person. Old videos about family guys and the Big Bang Theory and Steven Universe just aren't worth being this upset and worked over for this long. If you've ever spent an extended period of time hounding a creator instead of just outgrowing them and moving on with your life, touch some fucking grass.